I did not have sexual relations with that man. For the past couple years, Sketch has been making a massive name for himself. He's just now at 1.1 million followers on Twitch. He's been growing massively thanks to a lot of the support from his fans. He's been getting some pretty interesting clips on TikTok, and that's how I first discovered him. And yesterday on July 7th, a video called The Untold Story of Jamie Marr was released, basically just uncovering all of the information that we now know today. Uh, basically, if you guys don't know, he has been exposed for being gay, OnlyFans model, which, I mean, who cares? Uh, it's really not that big a deal. But I wanted to go through this video and see what this guy had to say because I have yet to watch it. I've seen it pop up on Twitter every now and then. So I wanted to see what it had to offer and if this video is even really uh, all that good. Because I, I, I think I understand where this is going to be going. Kylie Cox, known online as Sketch or the Sketch Reel, was previously an LGBTQ plus adult content creator. This video was awkward to write and it was just as awkward to put images together for and edit. I'm positive that awkwardness will translate into the viewing experience, so I appreciate you for watching and sharing if you see fit. I also wanna add all the information and visuals are sourced from public content sites like OF, like Reddit, like X. None of this was pulled from Kylie Cox's personal life or personal data. This was all things that Kylie created and shared in his previous attempt to become internet famous prior to his content creation under the moniker of Sketch. I sat on this story for a couple of weeks. I was unsure if, if I really needed to create it and share it with the world. However, I did go to school for journalism and NJ school they taught us if a story meets the standards of timeliness, proximity, interest, controversy, sensationalism, prominence and novelty according to shoemaker at all 1987 it is newsworthy and it needs to be shared with the public so i mean despite everything that he has said here just listening to it this seems like a thing that never even really needed to be mentioned i i don't understand why unless sketch was just straight up being homophobic on stream saying you know gay people suck or whatever i don't understand why a video like this needed to ever be made because it's not like he was ever claiming to be against the lgbtq or that he hated them to just exist to expose some guy for doing something in their past which i mean isn't really even it's it's like not even crazy it really isn't so this video just seems pointless i also like how the guy sat down and thought about this and held on to this information for weeks before he dropped the video throughout those weeks he decides yeah you know what it's about time i drop this man it, it's it's about time even though, I mean, he did think that it was probably not something worth talking about. And I feel like if you need to think about that, then you probably just shouldn't do it. At some point in 2023, Cox created the character Sketch and started to live stream himself playing Madden NFL on TikTok. He did this for a few months, and then one day, overnight seemingly, his catchphrase, What's up, brother, went viral and made him a sensation. Since then, 2024 has been a major year for Kylie Cox. He's partnered with people like the Houston Texans, Kai Sinat and AMP, Fortnite, Jinxie, other sports teams like the Dallas Mavericks, Tennessee Titans, and March Madness, and other people have been seen doing his what's up brother emote, if you will. But really, many of us only know that sketch. We only know the sketch from 2023. And in recent interviews, Kylie has said that prior to becoming Sketch, all he did was work with his family in their real estate business from 2020 to 2023. That could be part of the story, but we will uncover. It is not the full story. I feel like the internet is the only place on earth where if you do not talk about one specific part of your life, then you are an evil villain, bad guy, loser who deserves nothing but the worst in life. It's so weird how different the internet was compared to how it was earlier. If you you were alive back then you probably remember your parents telling you not to give any information out to strangers not to do weird things you know on the internet not to you know talk to strangers on the internet even dude just don't give out any information it's so weird how different the internet is nowadays when it comes to not even really hiding things just not talking about things that you don't really want to talk about everyone has a past that they feel ashamed for and in Sketch's case, I mean, sure, he's allowed to feel ashamed about this. But honestly, does he even really need to in the big 2024? It's like, it's a completely different year. I wanted my next video, this video, to be about Sketch. He's very popular. For the algorithm's sake, people will likely see a Sketch thumbnail and click on it. However, in doing my research for Sketch's personal belief system, I ran across the comment 
from user Red Warfus on Instagram, who suggested Googling Jamie Marr HTXXX and Jamie Marr NSFW to quote see Sketch in his true form, with the warning that there was graphic content to be seen. In doing this, I discovered that before Sketch, Kylie Cox led a life of an LGBTQ plus adult content creator known as Jamie Marr HTXXX, as well as the several other monikers related to it. I understand that that is a very serious claim that again can have very huge implications on his future. So yes, we wanna be certain that this person, Jamie Marr HTXXX, is Kylie Cox, who is Sketch. I mean, at the very base level, if you just look at the name, Jamie Marr HTXXX, or Jamie Marr TX, that would indicate to us that this person is in the Texas area, specifically Houston, which we know for a fact is where Kylie Cox, AKA Sketch, resides at as well. When we follow that name to Reddit, we get more confirmation that this person is indeed in Houston, because in 2021, they posted several times looking for Houston area meetups. They also posted a handful of times promoting their content on Twitter. Now, when you follow the link to Twitter, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to slice this, the account has been scrubbed from the internet. In fact, most things associated with Jamie Marr have been scrubbed for the internet or at least attempted to have been scrubbed from the internet. Still, things remain, things like a video in 2022 from Big DJ who features Jamie Marr HTXXX. And looking at the screenshot here, we can see this person very closely resembles Kylie Cox or Sketch. Again, cross-reference with other pictures of Sketch. Those are the exact same glasses. Now, yes, people often have the same glasses or at least the same aura of glasses, but blue rectangular frames with colored arms is very unique. Connecting that with, you know, the the very unique look of Sketch in the hometown of Sketch and the hometown of Jamie Marr. It's hard to chalk that up as coincidence only. I don't really care to go through the rest of the video, but you guys get the point. The video is just so pointless. It makes no sense. So just today, Sketch went ahead and went live to talk about it and address everything. He basically confirms all the images seen were real, but in the stream, he seems very apologetic, which I don't think he really necessarily needs to be. It is quite sad that he needed to apologize for any of this. I understand why he would want to keep this like under wraps because it is his business. Sketch did nothing wrong. I don't believe he needed to do that. Elephant in the room, I got a haircut. Wasn't planning on doing this today, but I guess so. Okay, I'll start from the top. Look at this, open it honest. That was me. Two years ago, I did some stuff. I'm sorry if you've seen some of the stuff. You know, I'm a changed person. So two years ago, I did not have sexual relations with that man. I'm just kidding. I did. Possibly. Shit hit the fan. I don't, don't go on Twitter. I, I deleted... No, I'm just kidding. I didn't delete Twitter. I have been cautiously avoiding it. It's like fucking landmines everywhere I go. Okay, I was dealing with some addiction problems. Yeah, that was me. Um, I fucked up. I won't do it again. I've been living under the threat of that coming out for like two years. Started social media, just kind of dicking around. Had that in my past. I'll tell you what, weight lifted off my shoulders. Plan A was, and I will say candidly, was to probably eat a, eat a, well, probably to call it quits if this ever came out. But some people saved me. Shout out Banks. Shout out my parents. Like, shout out y'all like, I fucked up, but I'm changed. Um, yeah, I did, that's about it, though. If I was alone and I was at my house, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. But the people at FaZe, Banks, especially, um, and my friends that I've made over the past couple years came in and they saved me. I don't know what I was going to do, but... Like I said, the stream was very sad, especially at the end when he started crying. It, I don't think he needed to do it in the first place. It, it genuinely just a really sad situation. And when you move over to Twitter, things do look a little bit more positive for the guy. Like there are a bunch of people defending him, lots of streamers on his side saying basically that like, you know, that he didn't really do anything wrong and that everything is perfectly fine. Some people are being assholes about it on Twitter. A lot of people are. It's in my ass, brother. <laughs> but